Uh, hello YouTubers and uh, welcome to my first ever unboxing using my 600D um, and what I'm going to be looking at here is the Samsung Galaxy S3 it's pretty much brand new, came out last week um, so let's get started, so start with the box pretty simple looking box, uh, nice and minimalistic I suppose uh, it's just got your general specs on the back there I'm your eye on the front there and that's it really let's have a look what we've got inside so, Right, so we've obviously got the phone, set that to the side for a second, have a look at that in a minute. So, in your box, not a lot in here really, to be honest. So, we've got your standard lithium cadmium battery. Probably get about two days at the most out of that for this kind of phone. You've got your usual sort of literature in here, so you've got a quick start guide. Uh, just there and you've got your warranty information just there uh, you get a standard USB to micro USB cable with it and that's for your charging and for your data transfer onto your PC or Mac or whatever you've got you get a pretty nice pair of headphones Samsung headphones tend to be quite good I've tested out the Samsung Galaxy S2 ones uh, and I think these are actually the same. They come with your in ear silicone buds, and it's got a microphone port on it as well, um, which is just there. And it's got your usual controls of up, down, uh, volume, and answer and reject call. You've got different size silicone buds to go with that there, so you can get the right size for you. And the only other thing in there is your standard three pronged. Um, UK main charger with it and it's got one of these flick out third prongs here just to make it a bit more compact in the box so let's move on to the actual phone itself so here we have the actual phone itself it's quite a large one it's uh, 4.8 inches for the screen uh, on the front here you've got a 1.9 megapixel camera your two light sensors up here for uh, sensing whether or not you put it to your face or not so it doesn't go off uh, when you're making a call and you've also got an LED flash here flashing light which you won't be able to see at the moment at the front just one standard hard key for going home uh, um, you've got your option soft key and a back soft key there you'll see that when I start it all up uh, on the left side you've just got the volume up and down key I think it's 8.4 millimeters thick this so it's a nice thin phone right side just your standard uh, sort of lock key here and power key and then on the back you've got your 8 megapixel camera which also does 1080p video at 30 frames a second LED flash and a speaker grill there in the back of the phone this is a bit flimsy really, I don't really like it, it feels a bit cheap to be honest but that's the same with all Samsung Galaxies really not quite as good build quality as say the iPhone um, so in the back of the phone, I've already put the battery in you've got a micro SD slot that can take up to um, 64 gigabytes and it's micro SIM that this one takes so it makes a little bit more space in the back of the phone you can just get a normal SIM and cut it down to size and it will work fine in there as well as long as it's 3G so let's get this beauty fired up so press and hold that for about three seconds to get it to come on no vibration or anything like that when it comes on the screen quality is brilliant it's got 16 million colors 720 by 1280 pixels and that's a 306 uh, pixel density which basically means 306 pixels per inch um, I'm just gonna get past this screen and I'll cut back into it once it's all set up actually why not I'll show you it so it's the standard setup um, for any Android phone gives you all the setup stuff straight away you log it onto your onto, onto your Wi-Fi and uh, you can start signing into everything so you've got your Samsung account which is basically just for downloading apps and music and stuff nothing you can't already get off Android Market uh, let's skip all this uh, you've also got your Android uh, login there which will be with a Gmail account 
Uh, phone belongs to. Got Dropbox as well. That gives you 50 gigabytes. Uh, that's free for two years. I'm not sure what it is after that, uh, but that's pretty good for your online backup. And it's ready to go. So, as you can see, quite a nice screen quality. Uh, it's a Super AMOLED screen as well, so the colour density of the, the brightness is going to be really good uh, on here. It's just standard what you're used to if you've already had an Android phone uh, set up. You've got your desktop which you can switch between all your windows, get about seven of those I think, yeah, seven. And you can personalise these as you like, adding, adding widgets and your shortcuts on. Now usually all these widgets are quite power hungry with Galaxies um, because there are lots of little things going all on at once but with a quad core processor you're absolutely fine. It's a quad core processor, it's 1.4 GHz and it's a Cortex A9 chip so it's nice and smooth no matter what you're doing. And because of that Samsung will be able to put some pretty interesting features in with it. Uh, one of which, which is my favourite, if you go into your main menu and go onto a video and you're playing your video, which by the way is lovely quality, both landscape and portrait. And what you can do is you can press this little button down here if you get a text message or something like that, and it resizes the video, and you can move that around the screen as much as you like. Uh, and you can carry on doing whatever it is you need to do at the same time. So you can send your text, you can have a look on Facebook, or whatever. And this is probably quite a processor heavy thing to do, but it's obviously running it no problem at all. There's no clipping at all when I'm moving it around. It's really good. You can double tap to go straight back into the full size video, or you can even hold it down. And this little minus appears on the video. Press that, and it's gone no lagging at all going on there. One thing I do quite like about Samsung's version of um, of Ice Cream Sandwich uh, which is running 4.0.4 on this as standard uh, compared to HTC's version is that they haven't taken away all the quick shortcuts at the top here of the notifications bar. So let me just refocus so you can see this properly uh, refocusing done so you can see this properly so at the top here you've still got your quick shortcuts to all the things you want they've actually added um, a few in here as well so you've got your Wi-Fi and GPS there screen rotation is on you can switch it off to lock it power saving mode so it will dim the screen a little bit just imagine it probably switches off 3G apart from when you actually tell it to use it Notifications on and off, which would be quite useful if you're in a meeting or anything like that and you don't want it all going off. Mobile data network switch on and off, Bluetooth driving mode to make all the icons nice and big. On the HTC, you have to go into this little cog just here to activate that, uh, which is a bit long winded really. Also, on the HTCs, you don't have this anymore where you can just bring up the options here, um, which is a bit irritating really. I don't see why they've made it so long winded on the HTCs. So other features that the phone has got, you've got near field communication on there, uh, which uh, works automatically with Samsung's, and you can use that near field communication with any uh, near field communication activated handset, or enabled handset rather. Um, so say if you've got a friend with an Android handset or another Galaxy, you can bring up the app for near field communication, uh, you can both pop your phones together and then you can transfer files nice and easily obviously you can use it to pay for stuff as well if you wanted to and you don't need to get one of those stupid little stickers to go on the back of your phone from Barclays um, what else have we got here uh, now as far as the browser is concerned with the phone uh, it runs HTML and Adobe Flash so you can pretty much look at anything and you're not restricted like on the iPhone as far as video is concerned let's have a quick look at how it runs so if we go on to, oh, it's pretty quick, considering I'm on a really rubbish Wi-Fi as well. Uh, let's have a look at what the keyboard's like. Pretty good quality. It's just standard, um, your standard um, keyboard with any Samsung. 
and uh, wow, that actually loads up much quicker than anything else on this Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. Uh, no clipping as well, which is quite nice. Portrait, we still look good. Let's have a look at the portrait keyboard as well. Nice and big, you're not going to have any problem seeing that. Or using it. So that's quite good. You also have multitasking on this one. So you can, for instance, let's open up a few different things. Fantastic. Um, okay. So with ice cream sandwich, multitasking is nice and easy. All you have to do is press and hold your home key down for a couple of seconds, and then you have on screen uh, just everything that's already open on the phone to scroll between. You just click on it, and it will go straight back into it. It's got no problem with doing it. They've ported over the S memo, which um, is originally on the Galaxy Note, so you can create all sorts of different things on this. It's quite nice quality. If you get stylus, obviously it's going to work much better. Uh, there's a few interesting features as well that um, Samsung have put on here. I'll just activate them in the settings. So, if we go into settings, go down to motion, you can switch on mot motion activation and then you've got all sorts of different features you can start with. So in the uh, motion screen, you can do a few things basically. You can train it different um, gesture based things you want to do. So you can do shake to update, um, so you don't have to pull down on the screen on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can direct calls and all that sort of stuff. And you can t teach it whichever gesture you want for that. You also have uh, palm swipe and palm to touch to mute. Um, so, say if I wanted to take a screen dump, all I'd have to do is go like this, and there you go, one screen dump. And then all you do is pull down your notification bar, click on that there, and there you go, and there's your screen dump, and that will just save to your SD card as normal. So if I demonstrate to you the palm to mute, so if we're playing a video, all you do is put that on. Go like that, and it stops it, and it mutes it, and everything's all good. We've got a few other interesting features on here as well, uh, as far as in the settings are concerned. So again, if we go to display, we can switch on Smart Stay. It's quite a cool little feature, as it says here. When you're looking at the phone, it can detect it using the camera, the 1.9 megapixel camera on the front there. Um, and it won't dim the screen basically, uh, which is quite cool. Let's have a look at the camera. Like I said earlier, it's 8 megapixel camera. It does 1080p video as well at 3, 30, 30 frames per second. Uh, and as you can see, it's really good quality on the screen. I will upload some videos and pictures from the camera itself at the end of the video so you can see properly. Well, I'll show you a few of the features just looking at this white desk here, which is a bit boring. In fact, what I'll do is I will pop down my phone here so there's something decent to look at. Um, so there we go. You can see it's really good quality. So it's nice and simple. You've got the old HTC uh, 1X feature on here of being able to record a video and uh, simultaneously press that button there to take a picture. It just dumps it down there as you can see. Let's put it in there. Um, video settings wise, some interesting features. So one that I think is really useful is you can go into uh, video quality. Uh, no, that's the one. You can go into recording mode.